Hi, everyone. I'm Johnny, and it is spring, and that means it is time for the Acting for Singers final. Uh, this year, we were virtual, uh, but that didn't hinder our thespian explorations. Students this year tackled two contrasting monologues each from contemporary plays. Uh, we also did scenes from Angels in America by Tony Kushner, as well as Uncle Vanya and the Seagull by Anton Chekhov. We explored classical text and each student did a Shakespearean speech. And they also, uh, every one of them also wrote and performed their original solo piece. So we did a lot this year, a uh, lot of theater games, ensemble building, personal stories, uh, as well as actual singing and just trying to figure out how, how we sing while we act uh, and how we act while we sing. So this is just a sampling of the work we did together this year. And it's always a fun way to share uh, what we've done together. So thank you so much for being here and for sharing this with us. Have a great time. I ever tell you the story of Raymond Qualls? Not much story to it. Boy I had a crush on when I was 13 or so. Real rough looking boy. Beat up Levi's, messy hair, terrible underbite. But he had these beautiful cowboy boots. Shiny chocolate leather. He was so proud of those boots you could tell the way he'd strut around all arms and elbows puffed up and cocksure. I decided I needed to get a girl a pair of those same boots and he'd asked me to go steady, convinced myself of it. He'd see me in those boots and say, now there's a gal for me. Found the boots in a window downtown and just went crazy. I'd stay up late in bed praying for those boots, rehearsing the conversation I was going to have with Raymond when he saw me in my boots. I must have asked my mama a hundred times if I could get those boots. We want for Christmas, Vi. Mama, I'd give it all up just for them boots. Bargaining, you know. She started dropping hints about a package under the tree she had wrapped up about the size of a boot box, real nice wrapping paper. Now, Vi, don't you cheat and look in there before Christmas morning? A little smile on her face. Christmas morning, I was up like a shot boy under that tree, tearing open that box. There was a pair of boots, all right. Men's work boots. Holes in the toes, chewed up laces, caked in mud and dog shit. Lord, my mama laughed for days. Too cursed is more than cursed. I shall lessen God's sending that way. For it is said, God sends a cursed cow short horns, but to a cow too cursed, he sends none. So, by being too cursed, let God send me no horns, just if he send me no husband, for the blessing which I am at him upon my knees every morning and evening. Lord, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I had rather lie in the woolen. Though I may light upon a husband with no beard. But what should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my gentle waiting woman? He that hath a beard is more than a youth and he that hath no beard is less than a man. And he that is more than a youth is not for me. And he that is less than a man, I am not for him. Therefore, I will even take sixpence in earnest of the bear ward and lead his apes into hell. No, but to the gate. And there will be the devil to meet me, like an old cuckold, with horns on his head, and say, Get you to heaven, Beatrice, get you to heaven. Here's no place for you maids. So deliver I up my apes, and away to St. Peter for the heavens. He shows me where the bachelors sit, 
and there live we as merry as the day is long. Ready for my close up, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> One wants to move through life with elegance and grace blossoming infrequently, but with exquisite taste and perfect timing. Like a rare blossom, a zebra orchid. One wants, but one so seldom. Get what one wants, does one? No, one does not. One gets fucked over. One dies at 30, robbed of decades of majesty. Fuck this shit. Fuck this shit. I look for the corpse. A corpse at. Oh, my queen. You know you've hit rock bottom when even drag is a drag. Are you? Who are you? Who are you? What are you doing in my hallucination? Not in your hallucination. You're in my dream. You're wearing makeup. So are you. But you're a man. The hands and feet give it away. There must be some sort of mistake here. I don't recognize you. You're not... Are you one of my imaginary friends? No. Aren't you too old to have imaginary friends? I have emotional problems. I took too many pills. Why are you wearing makeup? I'm in the process of applying the face, trying to make myself feel better. I swiped the new fall color from the counter at Macy's. You stole these? I was out of cash. It was an emotional emergency. Told he's so angry. I promised him no more pills. The pills you keep alluding to? Valium. I take Valium. Valium. You're dancing as fast as you can. <laughs> I'm not addicted. I don't believe in addiction. And I, I never, well, I never take drugs. And I never drink. Well, smell you, Nancy Drew. Except Valium. Except Valium in wee fistfuls. It's terrible. Women aren't supposed to be addicted to anything. I'm a woman. I'm a homosexual. Oh. In my church, we don't believe in homosexuals. In my church, we don't believe in Mormons. What church do... Oh. <laughs> I get it. I don't understand this. If, if I didn't ever see you before, and, and I don't think I did, then I don't think you should be here in this hallucination. Because... In my experience, the mind, which is where hallucinations come from, shouldn't be able to make up anything that wasn't there to begin with, that didn't enter from experience, from the real world. Imagination can't create anything new, can it? It only recycles bits and pieces from the world and reassembles them into visions. Am I making sense right now? Given the circumstances, yes. So... So when we think we've escaped the or unbearable ordinariness and, well, untruthfulness of the world, it's really only the same old ordinariness and falseness rearranged into the appearance of novelty and truth. Nothing unknown is knowable. Don't you think it's depressing? The limitations of imagination? Yes. It's something you learn after your second theme party. It's all been done before. The world. Finite. Terribly. Terribly. Well, this is the most depressing.
embarrassing hallucination I've ever had. My apologies. I do try to be amusing. Oh, well, don't apologize. I can't expect someone who's really sick to entertain me. Oh, that happens. It's just the very threshold of revelation sometimes. You can see things. As if you are. Do you see anything about me? Yes. What? You are amazingly unhappy. Oh. <laughs> Big deal. You need a value addict and you figure out she's unhappy. That doesn't count. Of course that. Something else. Something surprising. Something surprising. Yes. Uh, your husband is a homo. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's the threshold of revelation. Well, I don't like your revelations. I don't think you into it well at all. Joe's a very normal man. He. Stretch pants and lavender clogs. I just looked at you, and there was this, this sort of oh, streak of recognition. Yes. Like you knew me incredibly well. Yes. Yes. I have to go now. Get back. Something just fell apart. I'm glad. I feel so sad. I'm sorry. I usually say fuck the truth, but mostly the truth fucks you. I see something else about you. Oh? Deep inside you, there's a part of you, the most inner part, entirely free of disease. I can see that. That isn't true. Threshold of revelation. People come and go so quickly here. Stop, Isabel. You just keep quiet now and listen to me. You're always saying you want to understand us and what it means to be black. Well, if you do, listen to me carefully now. I don't call it murder. And I don't call the people who did it a mad mob. And yes, I do expect you to see it as an act of self-defense. Listen to me. Blind and stupid, but still self-defense. He betrayed us in our fight for freedom. Try to understand, Isabel. Try to Imagine what it is like to be a black person, choking inside with rage and frustration, bitterness, and then to discover that one of your own kind is a traitor, has betrayed you to those responsible for the suffering and misery of your family, of your people. What would you do? Remember, there is no magistrate or court you can drag him to and demand that he be tried for that crime. There is no justice for black people in this country other than what we make for ourselves. When you judge us for what happened in front of the school four days ago, just remember that you carry a share of the responsibility for it. It is your loss that have made simple decent black people so desperate that they turn into mad mobs. Oh, it's all such a mess. Look at this mess. My hair is a mess. My clothes are a mess. I want to talk to you about life. 
it's just too difficult to be alive, isn't it? To try and function. There's all these people to deal with. I tried to get a can of tuna fish at the supermarket. And there was this person standing right in front of where I wanted to reach out to grab the tuna. And so I waited a while to see if they'd move. And they didn't. <laughs> they were looking at the tuna fish too, but they were taking a real long time on it. Reading the ingredients on each can as if it, as if it were a book. Pretty boring book if you ask me. <laughs> but no one has. Anyway, so I waited a long while and they didn't move. I, I thought about asking them to move, but then they just seemed so stupid to have not sensed that I needed to get by them that I had this awful fear that it would do no good. No good at all. To ask them, they'd probably say something like, we'll move when we're goddamn ready, you nagging bitch. And then what would I do? <laughs> And so then I started to cry out of frustration, quietly as to not disturb anybody. But still, even though I was softly sobbing, this stupid person didn't grasp that I needed to get by them to reach the goddamn tuna fish. <clears throat> People are so insensitive. I, I just hate them. And well, so I reached over with my fist and I brought it down real hard on his head and I screamed, would you kindly move, asshole? And, yeah, the person fell to the ground and, and looked totally startled. <laughs> and some child nearby started to cry. And I was still crying. And at this point, I couldn't imagine making use of the tuna fish any now anyway. So, I don't know. I shouted at the child to stop crying. He was drawing way too much attention to me. And I just ran out of that supermarket. And I thought, hmm. I'll take a taxi to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. I need to be surrounded by culture right now, not tuna fish. You're being very cruel. Charlotte is my best friend. For my whole life, Charlotte has been my best friend. And she's also the only person who seems to care that I'm home. All you seem to care about is the wine. And if you care so much, I'll buy you new wine. I have a job. Did you not hear me last week when I told you that I have a job? I just got out of school. This is a very hard time for me. And if you didn't notice, I had my heart broken, okay? And I am a young, young person who is trying very hard. And I don't know if you know what it's like to have a job. Did you ever have a job that wasn't taking pictures of stupid tiny crap? Yeah, exactly. And no, I won't stop shrieking because I don't understand why you're doing this to me. And you two are some kind of gang. You're a gang. You with the kitty litter, and you with the wine, and the stuff all over the house. I'm asking to be heard. You don't hear anything I say. You don't care about anything I say or feel, neither of you. And you're looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. This is my house too, and nobody acts that way. With all your stupid shit all over the house, I hate you. I really, really, really hate you. Where were you? Out. Where? Just out. Thinking. It's late. I have a lot to think about. I burned dinner. Sorry. Not my dinner. My dinner was fine. Your dinner. I put it back in the oven and turned everything up as high as it could go. And I watched till it burned black. It stayed hot, very hot. Why? You didn't have to do that. I know. It just seemed like the kind of thing a mentally 
deranged sex stars help helping housewife who do. Uh huh. So I did it. Who knows anyone want how to do? How many pills? A bunch. Don't change the subject. I won't talk to you when you. No, no. Don't do that. I'm. I'm fine. Pills are not the problem. Not our problem. I want to know where you been. I want to know what's going on. Going on with what? The job? Not the job. I said I need more time. Not the job. All right, keeps together. It's just the apex tournament I'm doing right now. Okay, turn on. Okay. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Swag Papa37. Welcome back to the stream. I'm here. To... Mom, shut up. I'm trying to game. It is a real career path. Ninja's worth like $20 million. Yeah, the dude with his head dyed blue. Once you make $20 million and dye your hair blue, then you get to talk to me. Okay. All right, boys. What do we got? Brad, Trevor, Chris. All right, thanks so much for being with me today. Uh, really appreciate you. I'm lagging right now. Are you using FaceTime? Are you using Wi-Fi? Are you using Wi-Fi? Get off! I'm lagging! Fucking. Oh, stupid chip. Ma! Shut up, Trevor. Once I get a real chair, I'm going to beat your ass. Okay. Brad, you see that guy going around the corner? Around the corner. Around the corner. Around the corner. Banana swirl. Banana swirl formation. Come on. What are you doing? Ah! Oh, sorry, Dad. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm just playing some. Um, I'm just playing some games with my friends. What? Mom said what? No, I no, I didn't say that. Mom, I love you. Oh, you fell. <laughs> sorry, sorry, cast. Um, stream went down for a second. I'll be right back up. Okay. Whew. All right. Still going. All right. Around the corner. Trevor, I need you to run straight at me. I need you to run. I need you to throw that. I need you to throw the ramp. I need you to throw the ramp. I need to run. I need to make the jump. I need to make the jump. This final kill. Yes! Yes! I did it! I did it! Ma! Ma! I won! Why are you mad at me? Oh, because I... Oh! Can you make me some pizza rolls? Can you make me some pizza rolls? Asshole. Trevor, my mom won't make me pizza rolls. Can your mom make, you pre make me pizza rolls? Just have them send them over to me. You, you live right around the corner for me. Uh, yeah, you have my address. Come on. Just do that. What? What? What is it? What is it? I can't make it to granddad's funeral. I'm trying to game. He was dead. He was going to die anyway. We already established this. Fine, fine. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. All right, stream. I got to get off right now. Um, uh, it turns out I have some family affairs. Oh, shit. Have I been muted this entire time? Oh. Nobody heard me this entire time. They bore their face on beer. Hey, no, 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 
Nani, hey, Nani. And in his grave reigned many a tear. Fare you well, my dove. You must sing a down, a down. And you call him a downer. Oh, how the wheel becomes it. It is the false steward that stole his master's daughter. It is Rosemary. That's for remembrance. Pray you love, remember. And there's pansies. That's for thoughts. There's fennel for you in Columbine. There's rue for you. Here's some for me. We call it Herb of Grace, O Sundays. Oh, you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would give you some violets, but they are withered. Oh, when my father died. They say he made a good end. Poor Bonnie, sweet Robin is all my joy. Will he not come again? Will he not come again? No, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He never will come again. His beard was as white as snow. And flaxen was his pole. He is gone. He is gone. And we cast away moan. <laughs> God have mercy on his soul. And of all Christian souls, I pray God be with ye. Nobody knows what causes it and nobody knows how to cure it. The best theory is that we blame a retrovirus, the human immunodeficiency virus. Its presence is made known to us by the useless antibodies which appear in reaction to its entrance <clears throat> to the bloodstream through a cut or an orifice. The antibodies are powerless to protect the body against it. Why, we don't know. At any rate, the body's immune system ceases to function. Sometimes it even attacks itself. And it's left open to a whole horror house of infections from microbes, which it usually prevents against, like Kaposi sarcomas, these lesions, or your throat problems, or the glands. We think it may also be able to slip past the blood-brain barrier into the brain, which is, of course, very bad news. And it's fatal in we don't know what percent of people with suppressed immune responses. This is all very interesting, Mr. Weezer, but why the fuck are you telling me this? Well, I've just removed one of three lesions which biopsy results will probably tell us is a Kaposi sarcoma lesion. Mm -hmm. And you have a pronounced swelling of glands in your neck, groin, and armpits. Lymphadenopathy is another sign. And you have oral candidiasis. And maybe a little more fungus under the fingernails of two digits on the right hand. <laughs> syndrome whatever it affects mostly homosexuals and drug addicts mostly hemophiliacs are also at risk homosexuals and drug addicts so why are you telling me what are you implying doctor i don't I'm not a joke at it. Oh, come on, Roy. What? Oh, come on, Roy. What? Do you think I'm a junkie, Henry? Do you see traps? This is absurd. Say it. Say what? Say, Roy Khan, you are a. I don't. Roy Khan, you are a. 
not Roy Khan, you are a drug friend. No, no. Roy Marcus Khan, you are a. I'm not going to. Come on, Henry. It starts with an H. I'm not going with to. an H, Henry, and it is in hemophiliac. What are you doing, Roy? Say it. Say, Roy Khan, you are a homosexual. And I will proceed to destroy your career, your practice, and your reputation in New York State, Henry, which you know I can do. Roy, you've been seeing me since 1958. Apart from the facelifts, I've treated you for everything from Syphilis to from a whoring dolls. From syphilis to venereal warts in your rectum, which you may have gotten from a whore in Dallas, but it wasn't a female whore. So say it. Roy Cohn, you are you have had sex with men many, many times, Roy, and one of them, or any number of them, has made you very sick. You have AIDS. AIDS. Your problem, Henry, is that you're hung up on words on labels that you believe they mean what they seem to mean. Eight, gay, homosexual, lesbian. You think these names tell you who someone sleeps with, but they don't tell you that? No. No. Like all labels, they tell you one thing and one thing only. Where does an individual so identified fit in the food chain, in the pecking order? Not ideology or sexual taste, but something much simpler. Cloud. Not who I fuck or who fucks me, but who will pick up the phone when I call, who owes me favors. This is what a label refers to. Now, for someone who does not understand this, homosexual is what I am because I have sex with men. But really, this is wrong. Homosexuals are not men who sleep with other men. Homosexuals are men who, after 15 years of trying, cannot pass a peace and anti-discrimination bill through city council. Homosexuals are men who know nobody and who nobody knows, who have zero clout. Does that sound like me, Henry? No. No. I have clout. A lot. I can pick up this phone punch 15 numbers, and do you know who will be on the other end in under five minutes? Henry? The president. Even better, Henry. His wife. I'm impressed. I don't want you to be impressed. I want you to understand. This is not sophistry and this is not hypocrisy. This is reality. I have sex with men, but unlike nearly any other man of whom this is true, I bring up the guy I'm screwing into the White House and President Reagan smiles at us and shakes his hand because what I am 
is defined entirely by who I am. Roy Khan is not a homosexual. Roy Khan is a heterosexual man who fucks around with guys. Okay, Roy. And what is my diagnosis, Henry? You have AIDS, Roy. <laughs> no, Henry, no. Homosexuals have AIDS. I have liver cancer. Well, whatever the fuck you have, Roy, it's very serious, and I haven't got a damn thing for you. The NIH in Bethesda has a new drug called AZT with the two-year waiting list that not even I can get you on to. So pick up the phone, Roy, and dial the 15 numbers and tell the first lady you need in on an experimental treatment for liver cancer because you can call it any damn thing you want, Roy. But what it boils down to is very bad news. Oh my, 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 I'm all in a tizzy, I tell you. I've finally been given a job, a real, live, make-a-wish job, and I can't find my wand. <sighs> it seems to be happening a lot lately. I found my hot rollers in the fridge and my breakfast bagels underneath the bathroom sink. <sighs> seems all the spell making has rewired my brain. I can't seem to do anything right. Yesterday, I turned my cat into a frog. Have you ever seen a frog meow? It's quite disturbing, let me tell you. But what's a fairy godmother to do without a wand? I can't whip up some fancy hairdo or make a beautiful gown with these crooked old fingers. Besides, I've never sewn a day in my life. And I certainly can't pack Cinderella to the ball on my back. What to do? What to do? Cinderella's going to be so disappointed having to wear those dirty old rags to the ball. The prince won't even notice her. Maybe she won't even go. Well, then they'll never meet, they'll never fall in love, they'll never live happily ever after, and then she'll be stuck in that wretched house with those wretched people, and it will be all my fault. Oh no, that just won't do. Here, little wand. Here, little wand. Oh, if only I turned my cat into a dog instead, then she could fetch it for me. It's just no use. Why do I have to be so scatterbrained? It's like somebody put a curse on me. Oh, I'm never gonna find it. I'm gonna be demoted to Tooth Fairy now. I want to turn pumpkins into coaches, not collect a bunch of dirty old rotten teeth. I've gotta find that wand and find it fast. Maybe it's in the freezer. Sir, spare me your threats. The bug which you would fright me with, I seek. To me can life be no commodity, the crown and comfort of my life. Your favor do I give lost, for I do feel it gone, but know not how it went. My second joy and first fruit of my body, from his presence I am barred like one infectious, my third comfort, starred most unluckily, is from my breast. The most innocent milk in its most innocent mouth. Hailed out to murder me on every post. Proclaimed a strumpet with immodest hatred. The childbed privilege denied, which longs to women of all fashion. Lastly, hurried here to this place before I have strength of limit. Now, my liege, tell me what blessings I have here alive that I should fear to die. Therefore proceed. But yet, hear this, mistake me not. No life, I prize it not a straw, but for mine honor, which I would free. 
If I shall be condemned upon surmises, all proof sleeping outs, but what your jealousies would awake, I tell you, tis rigor and not law. Your honors all, I do refer me to the oracle. Apollo be my judge. Like I was, I was like walking with like, with like, with, with Karen the other day, and you know, I mean, she told me her mom had to give her a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and pretzel sticks, but mine always gives me broccoli, so you know that's okay, right? I mean, that's still tasty. Sometimes she gives me goldfish. I mean, she doesn't give them to me. I I kind of sneak them from the pantry, but like it still counts as still in the lunchbox. Sarah, do you want to see my drawing? It's like super, super cool. Look, you do like a little circle and then like a little curve. Look, it's a flower. Do you want to try? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only you'll, you'll get a turn. Okay. Okay, okay. Draw something and then I'll take a guess. Okay. I think this is a squirrel. No. Okay. Um, I'll take another guess. Um, is it a popsicle? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lollipop. I totally see it. Um, Emily, do you want to like draw or like write something? I mean, I know we have to like sing soon, but like, I mean, you know. Stop. No, I don't like Jesse. No. No. That is not cool. We sang against each other in the audition for the solo, and he got the first solo. And that's like so unfair because I practiced so much for it. Hi, Miss Lori. Oh my God. I'm just gonna say my name for you to to sing. I mean, Jesse's already up there. But like, Alan? <laughs> Sorry, no, I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to you. Okay, okay, we have we have one minute and then we have one minute and then we do this. We, we start singing. Okay. What what did your mom get you for lunch again? Peanut butter and jelly and pretzel. Sounds really good. Really good. No, Alan, we already stopped drawing, but that's okay. Maybe next time you can draw with us. Yeah. I'm like really starting to get nervous. Jesse's like already up there and like they're talking to him and like why don't they need me? I have the next solo. Okay, I, I have to I think I have to go up. I think I'm gonna pee. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, Miss Lori, I'm ready to sing. Okay, okay. Oh I'll just I'll just like show you my like starting notes. Okay, okay. I see her in a smoking room. I smell wine, cheap perfume. For a smile they can share. The... Oh, you want me to start again? Is that, was I okay? Okay. Hey, Jesse. Okay, okay. Sorry, I'm really nervous. Okay, okay. Don't stop believing. Hold 
on to the feeling street light people don't stop okay yeah 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 i'll totally do the move okay okay yeah 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 great thanks miss Lori. I'll, i'm gonna go sit down now okay yeah i definitely sing so good like i'm totally gonna be a star one day Base fish resort. If you will feed nothing, you will feed my revenge. He has disgraced me, hindered me a half a million, laugh at my losses, work at my gains, scorn my nation, swarting my bargains. Call my friends, hated my enemies, and what is his reason? I am a Jew. Has not a Jew eyes? Has not you hands? Organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions? Fed with the same food, hurt by the same weapons. Subject to the same diseases and healed by the same means. Warm and cool by the same winter and summer as a Christian is. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, show me no revenge? If we are like you in the rest, we will resemble you in that. If a Jew wrong a Christian, what is his humility? Revenge! And if a Christian won a Jew, what should his sufferings be by a Christian example? Why? Revenge! The willingly you teach me, I will execute. And it shall go hard, and I will better the instruction. There's only one man in my life that's ever made me happy. You know that? One. Hmm. I meant George, of course. My husband, George. You don't believe it. You always deal in appearances. Who's out there somewhere in the night? George, who is good to me and whom I revile. Who understands me and whom I push off. Who can make me laugh and I choke it back into my throat. Who can hold me so that it is warm? And whom I will bite so that there is blood. Who keeps learning the games we play as quickly as I can change the rules. who can make me happy. And I do not wish to be happy, and I do wish to be happy. George and Martha, sad, sad, sad. Who 
whom I will not forgive for having come to rest, who took one look at me and said, yes, this will do, who has made the hideous, the hurting, the insulting mistake of loving me and must be punished for it. George and Martha. Sad, sad, sad. One day, <laughs> one night, one stupid liquor ridden night. I'll go too far. I'll either break the man's back or push him off of me for good. Which is what I deserve. This is so nice tonight. The food here is so good. This was such a great idea. Um, you know, by the way, I was, I was just gonna ask you, but like, can we, you mind splitting the bill? That's okay, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I knew you'd say yes. Thanks, baby, you're the best. You know, I'm like really working on producing that EP. It's supposed to come out anytime now. So thank you for that. <laughs> so what were you gonna ask me about? Oh my God. God, why did you have to bring that up? Damn, you ruined the night. I mean, it's always, it's always, you got to bring something up. Why can't we just stay the way we are? I don't need a relationship to know how I feel about you. <laughs> what, we've only been, what, hooking up for like nine months? Oh my God, babe. Oh, that's so manipulative of you to bring that up. Damn, things were good. Things were good. Just leave them there. Just leave them. That's toxic. And I mean, I'm, I barely, I'm only 28 years old. I barely graduated college, what, four or five years ago? My life's barely starting. I'm not ready to settle down, you know what I mean? I know you understand, but like, come on. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Just, just don't bring that up, especially now when we're out having a nice time. God, no, oh, it's, it's fine. It's, oh, can we get some refills, please? You know, you look great in that waitress outfit. Yeah, not everybody can pull that off, but definitely pull it off. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh my God, I'm being polite. You know how people, you know how it is. Come on, babe. You know, you know, I care about manners so much. Oh, excuse me. Anyways, see, things like that. That's your toxic trait, you know what I mean? You always have to bring that up. It's always just focusing on the negative. I'm just being friendly, you know, I'm a friendly guy. You know that. Anyways, hmm. Oh, Kyle, what is up? Oh my God, how have you been? I haven't seen you in forever. How are things at the frat? Oh my God, how is it? What is it now, the class of, it's the cl class of 2017? Oh. My God, damn, it's been so long. I really need to get down there and hang out with you guys sometime. How are the, how are the lower classmen down? Oh my gosh, wow, that's crazy. I can't believe it's been that long. Well, you gotta hit me up, man, yeah. Totally, you have my number. Yeah, <laughs> all right, I'll see you later, man, bye. <sighs> well, you ready to pack it up? Okay. Yeah, I'm about ready to go. Um, oh, babe, can you can you take care of the tip also? Thanks. You're awesome. Thanks. Come on, let's get in the car. What you expect? You expected me to get the door for you, babe? You're oh, you're such a hypocrite. You know, you're all about like that that female empowerment, equal rights shit. I mean, I mean stuff. You know what I mean? But like, that's no. The double standards, the double standards, just 
you got to get your own door, babe. You can't expect me to do things for you. You can't expect men to do things for you in your life. Come on. <sighs> Damn, traffic is so bad tonight. I'm going in tonight. She's not with him tonight. Oh my God. Oh, Come on. Damn, you see this asshole? Move out of the way, man. Oh. So anyways, yeah, just don't, oh, my mom's calling me. Hey, mom. It's fine, I can drive and talk at the same time. It's fine. Uh, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, 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 mom, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm just really busy, you know what I mean? Making moves and stuff. Yeah. Mom, yeah, I know. I, I don't call. I don't call you guys. I call you guys what twice a month. That's that's already enough. I'm busy. Got lots of stuff on my plate right now. Oh no, uh, job. No, I I actually, I'm still waiting to hear back for a, from a couple positions. Uh, yeah, I mean it's unemployment. Yeah, what has it been? It's just March of since since March of 2020. It's not, it's not been that long, you know, I'm, I'm working. And then mom, you know, I'm working on my music. Yeah, I know, but like, you don't, you don't act like it's important. It's important to me. No, I'm not dating anyone right now. Yeah. Uh, nah, I'm not really looking to settle down right now, mom. I'm, I'm, I know, yeah, I'm just independent, you know? That's just how I am. Oh, by the way, um, is, is dad gonna wire me the, the rent money for next month? Okay, yeah. Can you try and get it get into me by tomorrow because I don't want to be late again, you know? Yeah. All right, mom. Yeah, mom. Yeah. I gotta go. Okay. All right. See you later. Bye. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all, but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile folding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath less mind of any judgment taste, Wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste, and therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled, as waggish boys in game their selves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyne, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine, and when this hailsome heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in mine, I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. I feel like such a fucking idiot. You come over looking for a friend and I'm... I guess I thought... I've always had this problem. It's not just you. Sometimes you see the signals you want to see instead of the signals that are actually there. I used to ask, I used to say, can I kiss you now? But it's so unromantic, so unspontaneous. I just thought, but yeah, sorry about that. I guess I needed you to want that whether or not you did.
guess I just really need something right now. This whole thing has been really fucked up. Not just being sober, but... I was a whole different person. I never thought I'd be the kind of person who... It's been really hard to get through the day. I stopped drinking because I had to. I couldn't keep going that way, but now I'm trying to figure out how to keep living, you know? I'm running out of reasons to stay alive. Not that... I'm sorry. This isn't your problem. You don't want to hear this, right? Ted? Are you still there? Shirley, I'm Xiaoxin's mother. Look at my daughter's arm and the leg. They are bruises all over them. A few days ago, I brought Xiaoxin to the shower. And I just found out those bruises all over my daughter's arm and the legs. <laughs> it was done by her table mate. She told me that. It is just because my daughter didn't bring that girl the candy she forced my daughter to buy. And then she pinched my daughter's arm and the leg? It is so unbelievable! She doesn't look like a bully in front of you, does she? I mean, I thought she must be a good kid since she always has a good grade on her exam. Yeah, I know. Thank you so much. But I'm still thinking about changing my daughter's seat. Who are you in mind? Oh, Xiao Fang. Yeah, she always has the best grade on her exams. Uh, is she a nice kid? <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you so much, Teacher Lee. I hope she will influence my daughter positively on her study. Okay. Oh, uh, and also, um, can you tell Xiao Qin that I will pick her up today? Okay. Bye. Thank you so much. Hi, Xiao Hong. How are you? How is your school going? Good? That's perfect. Ah, oh, listen. Um, tonight you don't have to come. Yeah, because I'm thinking about bringing Xiao Qin out for dinner. Yeah. Um, how's her piano practice recently? Good? Listen, don't worry about it. If she become not well behaved or becomes too playful, you can scold her. It is okay. There's no need to spoil her, right? 
Okay, so I will see you the same time tomorrow. Okay, bye. Oh, baby, mommy knows that it is not easy for a six years old kid to sit in front of a piano every day for one hour. But mommy does all just for our future. You will understand, right? Oh, right. Forgot about this. Hi, Dad. Uh, tonight you don't have to come to pick up Xiaoqi. Yeah. I'm going to pick her up. Yeah, actually, I'm right in front of her school. Yeah, right now. Yeah, I don't need to work tonight, so here I am. Oh, have you guys cooked dinner yet? Oh, that's perfect. Let's eat together. Okay, so I will pick you guys up later. Okay, bye. Hi. Yeah, I feel much better right now. Mm, I just talked with Teacher Lee. Our kid will be fine. I just don't want to talk about that girl anymore. She's so terrible. So, I will meet you up in front of the restaurant. Mm. Oh, and also, I will pick up your parents later after I pick up some tea. Mm. So, we will see you in the restaurant. Bye, love you. Mm. Baby, how was your school? Good? <laughs> That's perfect. Listen, mommy just told, told um, teacher Lee about the situation and she promised me that she will protect you in the future. Yeah, so don't worry about that anymore, okay? And also, mommy has two good news for you. The first one is that tonight you don't have to play piano. You are this happy to not play in piano? And the second news is that tonight we will go eat at your favorite restaurant, Sichuan Hot Pot. Is our arm still hurting? What kid? Okay, so right now let's pick up grandparents. Yeah, grandparents and daddy will join us also. Okay, so let's go pick up grandparents and we will see daddy in the restaurant. I lived with him. I spent my life with him. I fed him, talked to him, tried to listen when he talked, talked to people who weren't there, watched him shuffle around like a ghost, a very smelly ghost. I had to make sure he bathed my own father. After my mother died, it was just me here. I tried to keep him happy no matter what idiotic 
project he was doing. He used to read all day. He kept demanding more and more books. I took them out of the library by the carload. We have hundreds upstairs. Then I realized he wasn't reading. He believed aliens were sending him messages through the Dewey Decimal numbers on the library books. He was trying to work out the code. Beautiful mathematics. Perfect proofs, elegant proofs, proofs like music. Plus fashion tips, knock knock jokes, I mean, it was nuts, okay? Later, the writing phase, scribbling 19, 20 hours a day. I ordered him a whole case of notebooks and he used every one. I dropped out of school. I'm glad he's dead. I think not. I love him just because I ask for him. Just but a peevish boy. Yet he talks well. But what care I for words? Yet Words do well when he who speaks them pleases those that hear. It is a pretty youth, not very pretty, but sure he's proud and yet his pride becomes him. He'll make a proper man. The best thing in him is his complexion and faster than his tongue did make offense, his eye did heal it up. <laughs> he's not very tall. Yet for his years, he's tall. His leg is but so-so, and yet tis well. There was a pretty redness in his lip. A little riper and more lusty red than that mixed in his cheek. Was just the difference betwixt the constant red and mingled damask. <clears throat> there were some women, Sylvius, had they marked him in parcels as I did, would have gone near to fall in love with him. <clears throat> but for my part, I love him not. Or hate him not. And yet, I have more cause to hate him than to love him. For what had he to do to chide at me? He said mine eyes were black, my hair black. And now I am remembered, scorned at me. <laughs> I'm amazed I did not answer again. But that's all one. Omittance is no quittance. write to him a very taunting letter, <laughs> and thou shalt bear it, wilt thou, Silvius?